The stock battery plug type is JST PH2.0. Welcome to Big Cell Hobbies. Today I want to spend some time talking about the battery for our SCX24. Specifically what mods I've done to it and why I did it and how the mods were done. I also want to talk about what battery I'm using, how I charge it, and why I'm recommending it. Before I get started on the battery, let's recap on my build philosophy. Strive towards the 60-40 weight distribution while adding weight only where necessary. And make changes then verify each step using the Sky RC corner weight system. Here's my current rig. It's currently weighing 293 grams and the weight distribution is 59% front and 41% rear. Before all the changes, my stock C10 weighed in at 230 grams with 52% front and 48% rear weight distribution. One of the first mods that I did was focusing on adjusting the weight distribution. The stock battery weighs in at 22.9 grams and the ESC weighs in at 12.2 grams. Since the battery weighs 10.7 grams more than the ESC, I switched their location to give it a more forward weight bias. Here are a few issues that I ran into with the stock battery. Number one, you have to plug and unplug the tiny JST PH2.0 plug from the ESC all the time. And I was a bit concerned that overuse might damage the port here on the ESC. Number two, although I don't have the supply charger, the supply charger is pretty bad. And I wanted to use my regular charger and be able to use the balance port while charging. Number three, a replacement stock dynamite 7.4 volt 350 milliamp 2S LiPo battery goes for $15.99. While I can get a better Gens Ace battery for half the price. Number four, with the relocation of the battery and the ESC, the battery wires were now too short to be able to plug into the ESC port and needed to be extended. Now let's take a look at the battery connector. The stock battery plug type is JST PH2.0. The other connector options on smaller batteries typically are JST SIP and XT30. Tests have proven that XT30 has the best connection followed by the JST SIP and lastly by the JST PH2.0. I went with JST SIP over XT30 due to the footprint which is a little bit smaller and a slight weight advantage and plus it's much more common JST type connector that exists. With my SX24, I wanted to keep the stock ESC, which meant keeping the JST PH2.0 connector that inserts into the ESC. I found a solution that addresses the four issues that I had, and it was to make an adapter using the JST PH2.0 connector from the stock battery, and using a JST male and female connectors. I first cut off the JST PH2.0 connector from the stock battery about halfway and solder it onto a JST female connector. And then I soldered the wires on the battery onto a JST male connector. Many of the smaller battery use JST connectors. So this just makes sense. With the adapter, now I can use many different JST male equipped battery as well as the original battery. A note of warning, if you do decide to cut the JST PH2.0 battery connector, make sure to cut the battery wire at one at a time. You do not want to short the battery and causing issues with the LiPo battery. As far as charging goes, I used the high-tech RDX1 charger that you can see here. It's well worth the money and it will charge just about any RC battery you could ever want to run. I use this charger for my 110 scale rig as well. I have my charger set up with the 8-in-1 LiPo battery charge adapter connector that I picked up from Amazon for $11. With the new JST male connector now soldered onto the original battery, now I can safely balance charge a wide array of JST equipped batteries 
and safely run a wide array of batteries in my SCX24 via the JST PH2.0 adapter. Here you can see how I have it connected. Here's to the charger connector and also the balance port. And the battery status is clearly seen. As for the additional battery for my SCX24, I went with my favorite brand, Jansays. I went with the one that has a bit more runtime, 450 milliamp hours. But more importantly, the C rating goes up from stock 30C to 75C on the new battery, giving me a little bit better oomph when I needed it. Also, in comparison, you can see the form factor. It's much smaller footprint than the stock, it's narrower and it's shorter, but a little bit thicker. Hope that this information may help someone out there, and if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching Big Some Hobbies.